So have you been working away editing a video project inside of DaVinci Resolve and there's just one clip in the timeline that just will not play back whatsoever and that's because you've got some heavy effects processing on it whether that's color, noise reduction or perhaps even fusion graphics sort of sitting just above it and the whole thing just won't play back but you want to get some real-time playback because otherwise you just can't really edit that piece accurately. Well DaVinci Resolve 17 has you covered because we have a new feature called Render in Place and this is a bit of an unplanned video, but I just wanted to take a second to talk about Render in Place and how it can really help you. Just before we dive into the video proper guys, for those of you who are new around here, welcome to the channel. Nice to see you. My name is Alex Cameron. I'm a certified DaVinci Resolve trainer and also a professional videographer. And one of the things I'm passionate about is helping people like yourself to generate more of their own content. Because in this day and age, we need to have video content for our businesses and our brands. And it's really important, it can sometimes be quite costly to have professionals come in all the time to do it. And don't get me wrong, sometimes there's a need for that. but a lot of the time you can do a lot yourself, but that means we need to know about recording video, we need to know about editing video. And that's one of the things we try and focus on the channel here. And at the moment, it's very much focused towards DaVinci Resolve and the editing side of post-production and how that can really be something that we can get to grips with. But we will be doing some other videos shortly. So if you're new and you haven't yet subscribed, stick around, subscribe. It would be great to see you in some other videos. If you're not new around here, welcome back to the channel. It's lovely to see so many of you as part of the community. And we've got some great conversations going already in the comments in other videos. So please do, don't be shy, say hello and do comment along as well. And I try to get back to everybody if I can. Can. So that's a lot about me. There's more information in the description as well if you'd like to know more about me or perhaps if you want to get in touch and see if there's anything we can help you with particularly. Then again, links are all in the description. Thank you for that. Let's dive into the video. So render in place, what is it exactly? Well, render in place is a feature that was added in DaVinci Resolve 17 and basically what it does is enables you to take a clip and then quickly render it to a particular output without having to go through the whole deliver process of rendering a clip out, which is the way that you used to be able to do it. But now what you'd simply do is you'd hit render in place on the timeline and you can render that particular troublesome clip out. And the way it works is really very good because what it simply does is it places that render in the timeline for you automatically. You can then scrub through and make sure that it's okay. If you want to make any changes to that clip, you can very easily just go back and reconvert to the original of that particular clip, make some changes and then render it again. And what's lovely about the render option is you get the option to choose where you would like your render to be stored and saved. So you can put it in a separate folder called renders near your media footage so you can keep everything nice and organized, which is important. And the great thing about that is that it also then puts it in your media bin and links the two up. So the great thing is when you then come to decompose back to the original, it's not a problem at all. And if you then decide to re-render, having then made a change, what's great about it is it will then give you an iterated version of that render. So what you can also do is roll back to a previous render if you'd like to. So there's a lot of great functionality in there, which is really useful. And what I wanted to focus on today is particularly this use case that I had in a first professional job since upgraded to DaVinci Resolve 17, where we needed to do some graphics in Fusion, but we were also wanting to work in a color managed workspace because we were shooting with the Komodo 6K, which is the camera I'm recording with right now. And the difficulty with this is that in the color management set up inside of Resolve and the way that Fusion is handling the graphics is at the moment there is a small mismatch. There's a little bit of a bug in the way that the transforming of the color spaces is being interpolated by the system. So I reached out to Blackmagic and they have confirmed that there is a small bug that they're working out and the way that that's handled, which is absolutely great to hear that they're working on it and they're aware of it. But the problem that that leaves us with is how do we do some professional work at the moment when we want to be in color managed but we also want to have the functionality of being able to do graphics and fusion. So this is where render in place actually came in really helpful. And I wanted to take a second just to walk you through the case study particularly that we had where render in place really helped us and show you how it might be applied to potentially your workflow too. So let's jump in. So here we are inside of DaVinci Resolve and I'm got a timeline that we've been working on. This is actually the finished timeline and this is the desired result that we're wanting here. You can see if I bring you onto the timeline that we have a base layer, which is our talent talking on the left, and then we have a graphics layer on the right, which is essentially created in Fusion. And at the moment, everything looks absolutely as it should. The colors are all correct, which is important for our client that the branding colors are accurate. So it's very nice to see that that's all looking good, but how do we get here? And this is the, this is the point I'm trying to make, is that if we go to our project settings, we're currently working in the DaVinci YRGB color managed color science setup. And color management is a topic for another video altogether, but very quickly, color management allows you to let DaVinci Resolve 
basically choose which color space all of these different clips are coming from and putting them into the right color space for you. So it's essentially doing a kind of initial transform of all of your different types of media. And it's much, much more accurate way of working than it is than using transform LUTs, things like that, because all LUTs are not created equal, all cameras are not created equal in the right settings and circumstances. So the color management is really useful for working in a really great quick environment when it comes to grading. And particularly Resolve Color Measurement, the preset, this DaVinci Wide Gamut, is a new gamut that's been introduced inside of DaVinci 17. And the great thing with this is that it creates an extra wide gamut, which is perfect for log grading environment, but it is suitable for SDR and HDR deliverables. And it just preserves maximum image fidelity, and it essentially also changes the way that the controls work inside of DaVinci Resolve as a slightly to help you prevent clipping and give you a much softer roll off towards your shadows and your highlights. It's very, very nice indeed. It's a lovely place to work in, particularly, if I come back, particularly that this clip was shot in a red raw format on the 6K Komodo as I mentioned in the intro. So the great thing with this is I want to preserve this fidelity of this image and be able to grade it in the best way possible. So I want to work in DaVinci Resolve color management in this case, and I find that the DaVinci wide gamut is a great place to work. By default, you'll be in the DaVinci YRGB if you haven't changed these settings. And again, we set our timeline color space to be the deliverable that we would like to go out to. So Rec 709 Gamma 2.4 in this case, absolutely fine for web delivery. And then we can hit save. Now, of course, everything's going to look pretty normal. You'll notice that my main image changed slightly. And that's what I mean between the wide DaVinci gamut that we've got and then the, the standard YRGB color science with just the standard Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. If you have a look here, you'll see how that changes when I change it back and forth. And here's a little tip for you when you're in the project settings. If you want to make a setting and save it before closing the box, press the Alt or Option key on your keyboard, hit Save, and it will make the change without you closing the box, which is really handy. So you can see how that image changed. If I go back and forth a couple of times for you, just so you get the feeling for that, back and forth, Alt Save, you can see how that's affected the image and how much change that's made. So obviously you can see why I would want to be working in this position to have maximum fidelity in my image there. So that's great. And you think, Alex, what's the problem? Everything's working, right? Well, the problem is this has obviously been rendered out. And this is the thing I was getting to. If I use, and we go back, we'll go backwards a little bit here and sort of deconstruct this. If I right click and go decompose to original, what you'll see is that all of a sudden my image colors are wrong in the graphic. They get washed out and they just don't look right. And that's a bit of a problem for us because of course we do not want to work like that. And obviously we couldn't deliver it like that because the client would be very unhappy with us. Now all of this, all that this is is a comp basically of a fusion. If I go into the comp by opening it in the timeline, you can see that that's just a fusion composition, which I've created. And again, I can jump into fusion. You can see this in fusion. Now, this is a template of a macro I made. So for the project, I actually created a macro so that it was a bit easier for me to work with these different options and I could change these if, as I needed to. So basically, that's Fusion there and it's that's how it looks and it's not quite right, is it? We, don't, we know that's not right. So we have a bit of a problem. So what I want to do is I want to just jump back to my main timeline and for the time being, what I need to do is have two different situations of working. So I was trying to find a hack or a way around this problem because I wanted to have the best of both worlds. I wanted to be able to work with the right colors for my graphics, but I also wanted to be able to preserve the image fidelity when grading. So what I was able to do was find a workflow for it, which is this. So create your fusion graphic. Don't worry about your grade for the time being. Switch over to the default, which is YRGB. DaVinci YRGB in the color management settings jump over, set it to your preferred output, hit save. Now obviously that's going to affect this image, but it's also going to correct this one. So you'll now notice that on the right hand side here, I have a correct looking image and that's great. If I then go into my timeline by decomposing in place, I can actually have a look. So this is how it would probably look. Obviously my grade is wrong at this point, but this enables me to quickly do my graphics inside of Fusion with the correct color. And again, if I dive into Fusion for you in just a second when my computer stopped hanging, what you can see is everything now looks correct and I can do my graphics in exactly the normal way that I'd like to. Now there should be a way of working in the color management system by using these different view LUTs, but as I mentioned before, there is currently a little bug and Blackmagic Design have confirmed that bug. They are aware of it and are working on it. So hopefully the way that Fusion is interpreting color in the color managed space, it was gonna be fixed very soon. But for the time being, here's my workaround. So we've created our Fusion graphics, which we're very happy with. Now what we can do is simply render in place, right? But unfortunately, 
at the time of recording this video, and I am on the last beta that's currently available for 17. I haven't yet upgraded to this, the full studio version, which is now available and came out just shortly before this video was made, but because I was working on a project, I didn't upgrade. So currently you can't take a fusion composition and just render it in place like so. And that's actually the same if I go to the effects library come to my effects, drag a fusion composition onto the timeline. It's the same with that. I cannot render that in place, unfortunately. So what we have to do is we have to create a compound clip. So we simply right click, compound clip. And in this case, I'd obviously done that already. So what I'm gonna do is just dial back a couple of steps. So I create my compound clip, which I've just done. And then from here, render in place. But it's important to render in place, making sure that you're still in the right color management setting. I haven't changed this yet back yet. So now I'm gonna render in place and I can choose my format. So you've got all sorts of different formats that you can choose from. ProRes is my preferred. Important to know that I have to render out in this instance because I want this to overlay my video layer underneath, I need this to be transparent. So when I come to render in place, it's important that I choose a codec and a type of render that is gonna be carrying an alpha channel. And in this case, ProRes 4444 carries an alpha channel. So I need to make sure I do that here. So now I can quickly render choose place my render, which I really like because you can actually very easily find a place and you can have a file location on your hard drive, a folder perhaps, that's right next to your other media so that you can keep it all nice and organized, which as I said, is very important. And you simply press open and that will just go away and render the media for you. Now this does take a little bit of time depending on how fast your system is. So with the magic of editing, we'll come back in just a second when it's all done. Okay, great. So you can see now that we have our render has now come in and we've got the render looking good there, but obviously we're still not in the right color space because our image on the left is looking incorrect. So let's just go back, change over our color science to the color managed, make sure that we choose our DaVinci wide gamut as our management preset, output color space and hit save. This should now look correct on the left hand side in just a second. Perfect. Let's put it on a slightly more flattering frame. And then you can also see that my colors haven't shifted now for my graphics. So my graphic is now really good to go. And I'm happy that that's all working as it should, which is great. What's really cool about the render in place is that it actually automatically creates an iterated version of that particular render. So every time you do it, it's gonna add another number to the end of the sequence to basically help you keep track of where you are with everything, which is wonderful. And it's really easy. You'll notice that I've now got this clip up here in my media pool and I can simply load it in and I can look at it in the viewer like I would any other clip. Automatically, it puts it in the bin that you're currently in when you hit the render in place option. So I actually have a separate bin with all my other renders in, which I like to keep things nice and organized. And actually in this case, I've actually got the previous render in here, which is this one here. If I double click on it, you can see now at the top of the viewer, I have the second render that I did, which is really handy because now if I wanted to, I could simply drag that in, drop it in and I'd have a render and I'd be able to go back to a previous render if I wanted to for whatever reason. So maybe the client said, oh, actually I liked it the way it was before. Perfect, you can easily roll back quite quickly. Furthermore, if you need to now make a change to this, so let's say the, the client comes back and says, actually, we need to make a change. One of these labels needs to be different, oh, but I've already rendered. What a bit of a pain that's gonna be. Well, actually, don't worry too much about it because we can simply right click, we can decompose to original as I showed you before. Now we're back with the original comp file. You'll notice that my clip now looks incorrect because obviously I'm working in the color managed space. So before I make any changes, I certainly want to switch back to make sure I'm in the right area. And now this will look correct. My grade will go off for just a moment while I quickly make my render change. So I can then simply open in the timeline. I can then go into fusion, make my change, no problem at all. So actually in this case, I've been told that they need to make a slight change. So we're just gonna add a small tweak with an apostrophe at the end of this particular label here. And I'm now gonna come back to my edit page, close out this timeline or come out of this timeline. And now that should be correct and the graphics look bang on. So I'm just gonna right click that, render in place. It's gonna make sure that I've got my alpha channel selected, render in my renders folder and hit open and let that render off and it'll be all done. So there we go, render in place. It's a great way of just getting around the little problem that we have, the wee little bug that we've got when you're trying to work in color managed space, but you can't because you also need to do some fusion graphics and things like that as well. Well, you can be in the standard YRGB color science and then still do your graphics and then switch over to DaVinci Resolve wide gamut later on when it's time to do the grade before you go to export and everyone's happy and we get all the right colors. So there we go.
How was that? Pretty useful, I think. In my, my case, certainly it helped me get a lot of my work done. It is a little bit of a workaround. It is a little bit of a, a hack, I suppose, for now. But it is something that certainly works and could be easily applied to other types of workflow or other situations where you have that problem with a particular clip. You need to kind of lock it into a color space or get it to play back smoother. And incidentally, if you haven't yet checked out my video on smoother playback inside of DaVinci Resolve, there's a card available in the top right there for you to be able to check that one out as well. Wasn't intending to put this video out actually, it was supposed to be a video on Fusion which is coming and will be out next week. But in the meantime this was a useful video, I had all the media in the right place at the right time to do this one so I thought I'd just jump in. What did you think? Hope you enjoyed it, I hope it was of value to you. If it was of value just take a second, pop the like button on for me just to let everybody know that this was a useful video to them and equally someone else who was in your situation might find some use from it too. Don't be afraid to dive into the comments and let me know how useful that was. It's really great to hear all these lovely comments that we've been receiving for some of the content on the channel so far and I do try and get back to everybody. Otherwise, that's it, guys. That's all I have for you today. Again, I hope it was really useful. There's gonna be a couple of videos popping up on your screen just very shortly. They may be of interest to you if you've got some time to kill and you'd like to have a little look or learn a bit more about DaVinci Resolve. They'll be popping up on the screen in just a second. Otherwise, though, thank you very much for watching. Stay safe, keep editing, and I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.